Hey everyone, it's Brian. And do you remember the longest mountain chain in the world? It's 4,350 miles long, and that same mountain chain is the world's second tallest mountain range after only the Himalayas in Asia. <laughs> of course you know the answer. It's the Andes of South America. And that is where we return for today's lesson on Latin America. Like the Amazon rainforest, the Andes Mountains are a dominant physical characteristic of South America. And beyond the vast Amazon, the Andes creates three diverse features prominent in the rest of South America. Those features are the coastal plains, the highlands, and the tropical forest. The coastal plains are a narrow strip of land between the Pacific Ocean and the Andes, which run the entire length of the continent from Colombia in the north to the southern tip of Chile in the south. This strip includes the Atacama Desert, the driest place on Earth. North of the Atacama are hot and humid rainforests in the Ecuadorian coastal plain, while a pleasant Mediterranean climate can be found south of the desert in Chile. On the opposite side of the Andes, on the eastern slope, are the forested tropical lowlands. People in Ecuador, Peru, and Bolivia call this area the Selva. This is where the mountains meet the Amazon basin and home to creatures such as the toucan. The Andes themselves are filled with highland valleys and plateaus, which can reach 16,000 feet high between the Cordilleras. In Ecuador, this area is called the Paramas, while those in Peru and Bolivia refer to it as the Altiplano. The climate varies with the elevation. One might find an alpine tundra climate at the high elevations above the timberline, while peaks such as Aconcagua are covered in snow year-round in the range's midsection. The northernmost mountains blend with a thick rainforest where rain is frequent and the temperatures are warm. Andean soil tends to be rich in more ways than one as gold, silver, tin, and copper are mined in the mountains. However, the Andes' height and inaccessibility have served as barriers to trade in the past and the present. However, a concept called vertical trade is present. Innovated more than 700 years ago by the Inca, vertical trade is the meeting of peoples from differing elevations in Andean market towns to barter their crops and handmade goods. Bananas, sugar, and other fruits grown in the Tierra Caliente, or hot earth, may be swapped for potatoes and cabbages from Tierra Fria, or the cold earth. The fact that such a tradition has endured for centuries isn't surprising when you learn that the Andean nations of Bolivia, Ecuador, and Peru include large indigenous populations. While Spanish is the official language of each, it's mixed with multiple indigenous languages such as Quechua, common in all three nations. The Quechua, who predate the Incan civilization, live even today in the Andes at altitudes as high as 17,000 feet, or more than three miles above sea level. Because of the altitude, the air is thin, and the Quechua have developed unusual physical characteristics such as larger hearts and lungs, similar to their mountainous peers on the other side of the world, the Sherpa people of Nepal. Ecuador Four South American nations are part of the Andean region, Ecuador, Peru, Bolivia, and Chile. The Quechua people are found in all four and make up about one-fourth of Ecuador's 17.7 .7 million people as of 2021. They reside in the Andes and practice subsistence farming for survival, much like they did centuries ago. But more than 70% of the population of Ecuador is of at least partial European descent. Spanish-speaking mestizos who practice Catholicism and work mostly in factories and tenant farms. The people are distributed fairly evenly between the highlands and the coastal lowlands. The affluent in Ecuador are those of direct Spanish heritage, which make up no more than 10% of the nation's population and who own the largest farms and factories, and, predictably, have the most political influence. Petroleum was discovered in the Selva in the 1960s and quickly became a vital export for Ecuador. However, fluctuating oil prices and government mismanagement led to economic instability. By 2000, roughly 40% of the population lived in poverty, 
adoption of the U.S. dollar over the traditional Ecuadorian sucre, and investment in education and health care since then have stabilized the now-improving economy. Two geographic notes about Ecuador. First, as you might have guessed, the nation gets its name from the equator, which passes through the heart of the nation. Second, the Galapagos Islands lie 563 miles off the Ecuadorian coast. The islands, also called Las Encantadas, or the Enchanted Isles, are an Ecuadorian national park and protected environmental area, and are also home to noteworthy species such as marine iguanas, sea cucumbers, blue-footed boobies, sea lions, and the famous Galapagos tortoise. Peru the demographics of Peru are similar to those in Ecuador. About 60% of the population is Spanish-speaking mestizos, while about a fourth of the people are indigenous, most of whom are Quechua, a language which is also an official language. Similar to much of South America, more than 75% of the population is Roman Catholic. Many of the 34 million Peruvians are subsistence farmers, or llama and alpaca herders, Others live in cities on the coastal plains and work in factories, mines, or on large plantations. Economic conditions in Peru have improved since the turn of the century. Since the early 2000s, Peru has had one of the fastest growing economies in the world. Mined exports such as copper, gold, and petroleum bring money to the nation, and an expanding base of tertiary services has also added to the nation's GDP. Still, Peru is best known for being the heart of the vast Inca Empire, which fell to the Spanish in the early 1500s. Tourists today still flock to the Andes to walk the ruins of Machu Picchu and relive a bit of history. Bolivia One of only two South American nations that doesn't border either the Pacific or the Atlantic Oceans, Bolivia, as you probably recall, is named for El Libertador, Simón Bolívar, who led and inspired revolution in many South American countries. Although the Bolivian government did not include Mestizo as a choice in its 2012 census, most of the 11 million citizens are Mestizo, but with the indigenous component higher than the European. A 2018 estimate of the Bolivian population identified some two-thirds as Mestizo, with about 20% indigenous. Most Bolivians are subsistence farmers living in the highlands. Crops vary based on climate, which changes based on the altitude. The climate ranges from cold and semi-arid to humid and tropical. Farming, while a way of life for many, is not as vital to the nation's economy. Natural gas, gold, and zinc drive Bolivian business. Still, Bolivia as of 2021 was the second poorest nation in South America. Like most of South America, Bolivia is predominantly Catholic and speaks Spanish, although the nation has 35 other official languages, all indigenous, the largest of which is Quechua. Other than Bolivia's status as one of the only two landlocked South American nations, Paraguay being the other, another geographical mention goes to Lake Titicaca. As the highest navigable lake in the world, Titicaca sits in the Andes on the border between Bolivia and Peru. Chile Appropriately, Chile in the indigenous Mapuche language means end of the land. The nation of Chile is uniquely shaped as a long, narrow ribbon of land that is more than 2,700 miles long, but only about 100 miles wide, as it runs from the northern part of the continent to the southern tip in Patagonia and the Tierra del Fuego. The Atacama Desert in the north is mostly uninhabited, as you'd expect. About three-fourths of Chile's estimated 17.5 million people reside in the central valley between the Andes and the Pacific coast. The area is blessed with fertile river basins that produce prodigious amounts of fruits and vegetables. Because of its location in the southern hemisphere, Chile's summer corresponds with winter in the U.S. and Europe. The timing allows its summer crops to be available for the winter markets of their northern neighbors. Farms and copper mines are the largest employers in Chile. Unemployment and poverty are high, and most live in urban areas, including the capital city of Santiago, which is home to more than 5.5 million people. About two-thirds of the population of Chile are mestizo, while about one-fourth are of European descent, mostly Spanish, German, and British. Spanish is the official language, and almost two-thirds of Chileans identify as Christian. 
While not exactly prosperous, the nation's economy and government are stable, which, as you've learned, hasn't always been the case in Latin America. In fact, since 1990, Chile's GDP per capita has increased at a much faster pace than most other Latin American nations. One geographic note about Chile. About 2,000 miles off its coast lies Rapa Nui National Park, a World Heritage Site, commonly called Easter Island. There, nearly 1,000 monumental statues called Moai watch over the island to greet incoming tourists. Conclusion Dominated politically and economically by those of European descent, these four Andean nations, Ecuador, Peru, Bolivia, and Chile, struggle at times to define their own culture. Each has a republic form of government, but each also seems to be controlled by a small but wealthy percentage of the population. Overall, the four nations have many commonalities, but are filled with diverse people who come from different backgrounds and with different histories. They each seek their own sense of identity in the Andean mountain range of Latin America. Until next time, keep exploring! Hey, hey.